If you build and manage semantic models today in Power BI, you're probably already aware that these semantic models can be reused by items such as reports that can connect to them and create additional views and visualizations. This consumption of your semantic model can be a really nice way to reuse the logic so that it delivers the most value. However, in Fabric, you can now consume a semantic model from notebooks by using something known as semantic link. This lets people be able to explore your semantic model and use the logic that you've defined in it programmatically, for example, using programming languages like Python for their own analyses and validations. A notebook can be used for much more than this, however. For example, a notebook can be used to transform data and write it to one lake. So not necessarily data from your semantic model, but data from any source. And then these delta tables can be used by your semantic model. Additionally, a notebook can be used to manage items in Fabric. For example, you can create a lake house with a notebook. You can also call the Power BI and Fabric REST APIs. So therefore, the notebook is a very important item type in Fabric. It's something that's very important to be aware of. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at an example of the semantic link being used to query and explore a semantic model. What we're looking at right now is we're looking at an example of a notebook in a workspace. So if you've never seen a notebook before, a notebook consists of cells that contain code. In this case, it has PySpark or Python code, and you can run that code by hitting this play button, but you can also run all the cells. And basically, a notebook can be a very nice structured way of piecing your analysis together because you can have the output beneath it, and you can also have either above or behind it uh, you can have Markdown to be able to describe it. So it liter literally is what it says. It's a notebook for your analyses, for your transformations. It's a really nice way to structure the way that you're working with data. So it's something that I feel very comfortable with and I like a lot. And I definitely suggest that you take a look if you're not familiar with notebooks. What we're going to do is we're going to run this first cell, which is going to install for us semantic link because we're going to use it to explore a semantic model. And the first use case that we're going to do is we are going to make a visualization of the products from a direct lake semantic model that's in the same workspace as this notebook. So we finished the first cell and we're going to run the next one. And this cell, what it does is we are reading the SymPy library. We're going to use that library to be able to explore a semantic model. Specifically, we're going to read a table. From this model, Team 1 After Fabric, we're reading the products table. We're pulling some very specific columns from it that we want. And then we're dropping duplicates. We're saving all of this as a data frame. And then we're reading a sample of three rows. So we can see that it worked as expected. And now what we're going to do is some very light transformations and then visualize this data using the Seaborn library in Python. So we can see that we get the results right beneath the cell we can produce very nice visualizations of our data. In this case, what we're looking at is we're looking at the log of price, cost, and profit uh, by various categories, showing the distribution for each of these metrics, as well as how many there are in each of the categories. So we can do visualizations that aren't possible out of the box in Power BI, um, for example. And there's a lot of different ways that we can utilize this. So there's a lot of use cases. It's obviously you know, very interesting, very exciting. We're going to proceed with the next example, which is very similar. The main difference is that we're reading a data set in another workspace. So we don't know that much about this, this not this data set, this semantic model. So we're going to start by listing its tables. And we're looking for a customer table. We're looking in this semantic model in this workspace. So we have a list of all of our tables here. And we can see that the first table is our customers table. So we know which table to take. And now we want to explore the columns of this customers table, again, specifying the semantic model and the workspace. But we're going to look at the columns to know which columns we can use for our analysis. So if we run this, we can see the columns that are available. 
And what we want to do is we want to look at the number of accounts, so the count of account name by key account. And we're going to visualize this in a bar chart, again with some very light transformations. So we have to retrieve that data. We confirm that we got the data. And then we're going to create our visualization. And we have our bar charts nicely formatted, showing us all of our key accounts, how many key accounts there are, or how many accounts by key account there are, um, as well as showing the percentage grand total for each. So the kind of formatting that would be difficult to get in Power BI, again, demonstrating the kind of use case we could do for these kind of one-off ad hoc analyses or you know whatever else. There's a lot of different use cases that apply. So to move on to the next example, we're going to look at another thing we can do with notebooks, which is transform data. So a team has been using for a long time Power BI. They didn't have access to more sophisticated tools to be doing Python. And they were doing a lot of data transformations in Power BI. But if we look at Power Query, if we're looking at the products table, and that's where this data comes from, actually, we can see that this team is not doing a lot of Power Query transformations because they're doing it all in Python. However, this can become problematic because in order to execute Python code, we need a personal gateway. if we want to have a scheduled refresh. And this can be problematic because a personal gateway is typically installed on a user machine. And it's very difficult to govern and manage. So, however, this team can use a notebook to move that Python code, those transformations, into the notebook instead. So they don't need the personal gateway. And it's much more performance, uh, much better experience, it's, it's just all around better. So in this specific example, the team uh, can take this input file, they put it in with one Lake Explorer, and then they use the Python code in the notebook to be able to transform it and write it to a delta table that they can use in a direct Lake semantic model to be able to create reports. And this is much simpler for them, much easier. And uh, it's an all around better workflow. It's just important to keep in mind that when you run notebooks, you have to manage their schedules if you want to schedule them to run. Um, and you also need to follow up with the, how much capacity they're using, how much compute they're using, so that they're not overusing your CUs. So, but this has been a very brief demonstration on how notebooks can be used with semantic models, specifically with semantic link to consume the semantic model to create visualizations.